what we look for is we, we compare similar to similar. Question, do you write your name, sign your name, the same way as you write when you're taking notes? No. no. We, for that reason, we only compare signature to signature. We'll also compare general course of business writing to course of business writing, printing to printing, cursive to cursive. So we have to make sure that what we're doing is comparing apples to apples. Now, there are some times when you'll get someone who signs their name the same way as they do when they take notes or write a list. In those situations, maybe you can. But the other situation that we find is that when, we have, when we're looking to see did a certain person simulate someone else's signature, we don't ask for that person's signature because signature is a habit. We don't think about how we write. We just kind of scrawl out that signature. When you're signing someone else's name, that's your regular handwriting. So what, what we'll ask for is that person's handwriting to compare that to the signature and see are they, their common attributes. The other part is we'll look for letter combinations because, for example, a person might write in, uh, 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 an E as a, uh, a Greek E or an epsilon type symbol at the beginning, but they might write a Latin E in the middle. A person might write a letter number eight, with, like what we call a snowman eight with two circles in one situation and might write what we call an infinity eight in another situation. So we want to see similar, at similar combinations. In, in whenever we can. So this was from a case in Riverside County. It was a case for the public defender. The question was, did the person really go out and visit the prisoners and get the prisoners to sign off that the person had gone out and visited with them? Well, by taking the, combina the, the letters and overlaying them on top of each other and then coming in here and looking at how different letters were written. Notice the N in Glenn and the, the N in the voucher. They're almost identical. When the person was presented with my report, she said, well, no, I didn't. I just, I just signed them and filled them out because I figured I'd save the county some money. But in that case, she, the person confessed when presented with a report. This was the situation where there's a question, did one of three people Write a, let, write a name. And the question, what I did here is I had the, I had the writing from, the, the, we know the person wrote, the, the word Cassius. And we also want to find out, did Joan or Mark write, and then we, by overlaying them, changing the colors, overlaying them on top of each other, well, who wrote it? The, gr the green is the, is the one in question. Yeah, Joan. Let's see how well that comports. We look at the spacing, it's almost identical. The sizing, it's almost identical. And when it, the way I get the sizing is in Photoshop, I do all the work in Photoshop, I can, based, I can just take the signatures and stretch them, just as, a, uh, as, just as a photographer would do in a dark room. You're not doing any distortion, you're just enlarging or shrinking so that you can do a size overlay. And by doing that, Again, I don't know what the result was. I just gave the report to the attorney, and what happened? I don't know. This is a situation. This was a Los Angeles County case. This is uh, a, a situation where the person doesn't really sign her name. She uses what we call a stylized signature. So that's her signature. She had four different ways of writing it, and one of those four comported with the, que the one in question in terms of style. But what I looked at here is I'm looking at the details. And when we look at the known signature, notice that everything is smooth on the known signature. We look at the question signature, we have sharp points. There are deviations. And in, in, in what happens when you make those sharp points, you're actually stopping and starting again. It's just like if you get to, get to a corner and you have to stop and then go. When you make a stroke like this, you're slowing down 
Just as if you're turning a corner, you have to slow down to turn that corner. Or if you're running you have, and going around a sharp corner, you have to slow down to get around a corner. But you don't have to stop to make that point. So it's a different stroke structure. And these are, these are ways in which we have to look at from the detail perspective, not just from the overall perspective of, say, does it look similar? Does it look the same? You have to look for those details. Now, in terms of speed, that's something that's been known about since 1929 when Robert Soudick wrote a book called Experiments in Handwriting, where one of the experiments he wanted to look at was how, do, how fast do people write at certain points? And how fast do they write certain strokes? And he, I mean, the technology he invented to do this was wonderful. He made what was called a Freeman unit, which was 1 25th of a second, where he was able to measure, have people write as the paper went along a, a conveyor belt or rolls and was able to see where they were writing. So really, really fascinating. <laughs>